Hello and welcome to the next video on homework using Maxwell's equations. Okay, we're still in Faraday's law, but this time we're looking at the differential form of Faraday's law. Last time we did the integral of the form. So this is the Dell operator cross product with the electric the field. This is called the curl. That's the common name for it. It's across the, the product is equal to the negative of the differential of the magnetic field with respect to time okay in the last the video i left off by saying i don't fully understand this negative i i i mean i know it's supposed to be there but i don't fully understand why well i rolled that around in my little head for a while and i understand it and here's what i understand okay so we have a magnet moving either toward or away from the point is the magnet is in motion or the wires in motion, one of the two, but it has to be a function of time. So it can't be stationary. As this magnet approaches, imagine this is a copper wire here, right? As this magnet approaches, it induces a current in this wire. Now we learned from Maxwell's equations, we, we learned from Gauss's law that a current flowing through a wire also creates a magnetic field. So we have the applied magnetic field, which is this one. And then this also induces a magnetic field. So the induced magnetic field. Now, if the induced magnetic field was going in the same direction as the applied magnetic field, then that would increase the current. And if you increase the current, then you increase the induced magnetic field, which adds once again to the applied magnetic field, and it keeps going until you've built a perpetual motion machine. And that violates the conservation of energy. So you can't do that. So that's why the induced magnetic field from this circulation of current always opposes the applied magnetic field, right? Be it from a North Pole, a South Pole, it's going in, it's going out, doesn't matter. This could be spinning or, and that is stationary either way. It always acts oppositely of the applied magnetic field. So I now understand why that to be true. That was fun. He doesn't give any problems in the homework of the differential form of uh, 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 Faraday's law. I don't know why. But he gave an example that's kind of fun. So let's do that one. He said the magnetic field in a certain region is given by the expression uh, blah, and notice it's only in the J hat direction. So part A was find the curl of the induced electric field at that location. Well, we just write down what the equation is, and we put in what he gave us. Mm, okay, and you can see that what he wants you to do is just differentiate this with respect to T, uh, which is going to give us a negative sign. Uh, and then we have to differentiate what's inside. So we're just going to pick up an omega, and that's going to be a negative also. All right. So the first time we get a negative from sine, which makes that a positive. The second time, when we differentiate what's inside, we get a negative from the omega, and that brings it back. So this is all he wanted. Now the second part, if the EZ, so the Z component of the electric field, is known to be zero, find the EX component of the electric field. What he wants you to do here is actually write out how to do a curl. All right. So here's how you do it. So you write down a three by three matrix. You put your unit vectors in the first row. In our, ha in our case, they're I hat, J hat, K, 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 K hat. In the second row, you put the first part of the curl, this. And across the product, you put the, that's important, you put the, the first one here. If you do it oppositely, you're going to get the wrong answer. So you put down <clears throat> your components of your Dell operator. Then you put down your components of the, uh, the, the components of the electric field. Okay, and the way you do a curl, uh, you can do this in your head. Uh, so imagine you block out this column and this row, so that's your I hat component. So if this is blocked out and this is blocked out, you're left with this two by two, the matrix here. 
you take the determinant, which is this times this minus this times that, right? That's what this is. Then you put down a negative sign, which is wicked important to do that. <laughs> Everybody makes a mistake and forgets to put that there. They get the wrong answer. So you block out this column and this row. Now you're left with this two by two matrix, this one and this one and this one and this one. So it's this times that minus this times that. Okay, that's this component. You block out this column and this row. That's your K hat com com component. You're left with this two by two matrix. So it's this times this minus that times that. Okay, so we get all this and we already did above this. So we also have an expression for uh, the del cross E. And so we just equate those two, two things, this with what we just found. But you see the only component here that is has the J hat in it is this one. So we write this down. And the problem was if the component EZ is zero, so this is zero, what is the value of EX? All right, so we cancel our J hats. Uh, we got a negative times a negative is a positive. So what do we have to do here now? Well, we just integrate this with respect to, see, we got a Z here. So we take that to the other side. We write this indefinite integral. All right, so we integrate this with respect to Z, and we get here a integral of sine is negative cosine. So that takes that out. And then we have to uh, take the integral once inside. So we're going to wind up with a K on the denominator. And that's what he was looking for. Okay, now something fun that's totally unrelated is if you're working in general relativity, uh, which is four dimensions, there's three dimensions of space, X, Y, Z, and one dimension of time. How do you do across the product in general relativity? Because the curl, the way you see it here, is only defined for three dimensions. Well, you can't do it this way. Well, how do you do it? Well, that's where tensor calculus comes in. How is the curl used in tensor calculus? By a clever fellow named Levi Civita, who was a student of Ricci, the father of tensor calculus, Levi Civita come up with the permutation tensor, which is just this little guy, epsilon ijk. And how do you use it? Well, you draw these cool little pictures here, <laughs> right? So if you're going in this direction, so you're going one, two, three, or two, three, one, or one, two, three, I think I already did, did that, or three, one, two, epsilon is positive one. If you go the opposite direction, one, three, two, three, two, one, or two, one, three, epsilon is a negative. And if any of these repeat, epsilon, epsilon is zero. So in other words, E112 is zero, all right? So here's what it looks like. So one, two, three, or three, two, three, one, or three, one, two is one. And one, three, two, three, two, one, two, one, three is negative one. So you write your cross product as L zero. You, you write your cross product like this. So you say del cross E, is equal to epsilon ijk del the 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 del component of i i'm sorry the ith component of del or the jth component of e times the k component of your basis the vector so in our case we're going to let x equal one y equal two z equal three which means that e1 is just i hat e2 is j hat and e3 is k, k hat all right so we can write this down and start doing our uh, permutation operators. So we'll just go epsilon one, two, three, right? So you see I, J, K is one, two, three. So that means I, I is equal to one, J is equal to two, and K is equal to three. So you just keep doing this. And then you go, so we did one, two, three. Now let's do two, three, one, two, three, one. So once again, we got I, J, K. We fill those in. Then the last one would be the other way, three, two, three, one, two. 
So we do that. You got three, one, two here. Then we go the other way, right? So instead of going in this direction, we go this direction. Three, two, one, or two, one, three, or one, three, two. And that's, that's, that's this one. And then what that actually means is you say, oh, let's take this first example here, which is an E3. So we got an E3 here and an E3 here. And we know the three means K hat. So, so we put that down. But this, so epsilon one, two, three is a positive one. And del one is with respect to X of E2, which is Y, right? And then the other one, so you go here, you find another E3. And then this case, it's a negative because it's going the other direction, two, one, three, right? Two, one, three is going to make it a negative. So you put your negative down there, here. And you got del 2, which is the partial with respect to y of e1, which is x. So you just, so, so these three are positive and these three are negative. You just fill all that in and you rearrange it the way we're used to seeing it. And you get the same answer that we got up above. So what's the point of all this? <laughs> the point is uh, in higher dimensions like space time, you can't do it the traditional way. You have to use this. A permutation the uh, the tensor in which case you would have one uh, zero one two three you'd have four of these and it follows the sa same rules you just make this a four circle instead of a three circle anyway wasn't that fun all right see you later